This tutorial is part of our full stack React Django DRF channels project, DJ Chat. You can watch this tutorial and many more from our YouTube course playlist, or the whole course, including access to additional resources from our Udemy course. The Udemy course link, which provides the best price for the course, is in the video description. Right, so next up is the secondary draw. This shouldn't take too long because the previous two components were probably the largest components. We're going to focus in again on the framework as and when we get to the point where we start to incorporate data from the API, we iterate over the secondary draw again and add any additionalities that's needed. Right, so this secondary app bar, or sorry, the secondary draw, sorry, this is what we're looking at here. Um, this is the second component in the middle here, if you can see. Actually, I don't know if you can see my mouse. Um, so where we have explore, programming, music, esports, education. So this is what I've described as the secondary draw. Notice that it's pretty static in terms of it's always on the page. It does get folded, remember, and it will then appear in the drop down here at the smaller screen. So all we're going to do is concentrate on just getting this uh, section in place, and then we'll take a look at adding the data later in the course. Right then, so we call this in the templates, we call this secondary draw. Okay, and then inside of here, let's just get going. So um, we call this again, secondary draw. Um, so we want to return something and then we want to also export de default. My brain and my hands always want to do something slightly different. Doesn't always help. Right, so there we go. Right, so what we're going to do here then, uh, remember what we're trying to do here. We need to create some sort of div element which resides on the right-hand side of this primary draw. Right, so we start off with this template. I'm not totally sure if you want to see me write out code. We've done it a few times now. So I've just incorporated this in. So this is uh, the starting point for the secondary draw. You can quickly tap it out if you're following step by step, line by line. Right, so once we've got this in place, we're going to need some sort of box, right? So some sort of element where we're going to hold everything together. So that's our box. And then inside of here, this is where we want to now add some style. So let's just import our box in from the material UI. There we go. And here we go. Right. So we need to think about this. So uh, the minimum width. So we're going to set a, a minimum width here. Okay. So minimum width. And that's going to be the secondary draw width. I'm not totally sure if we actually have that yet. So that's something we need to potentially build in a second in the theme. So um, let's go into theme dot secondary draw. Okay, maybe it doesn't exist then. Okay, so let's have a look. So in our primary draw, so we don't have a secondary draw. Okay, so let's go ahead and in the theme, let's uh, build a second a secondary draw um, is going to have a a width. It's not going to have a closed. So we're not going to open and close it. So there we go. So that's the secondary width. So we can then go ahead and actually apply something here. So we're going to need a number. Let's get rid of that. So this is going to be set to 240. Right, so let's go back. Theme dot. Hopefully, this will now be available. Oh, of course, we've not incorporated the theme yet, which doesn't help. So let's go ahead and do that. So, box and create. Oh no, we don't create theme. What am I talking about? Um, we want use theme. Apologies. So let's bring in use theme. Um, that's going to be from material UI material slash styles. Okay. And then we just 
include it in the top here. So a new constant theme. Hopefully this is uh, starting to make sense if it wasn't before. So we now have access to our theme. So we can now access the secondary drawer. Um, not like that though. Uh, so we can now access secondary drawer. So that should be all lowercase. Second, secondary, apart from the D, secondary drawer dot, hmm, what's happening here then? So I've forgotten the capital. That makes sense, won't it? So then we've got the width. Okay, so now we can access it. Uh, it's finding the width. Right, so that's the width sorted. So now we can go ahead and specify the height. Now the height's going to be the same as the primary. So in actual fact, what we can probably do here is just copy and paste this. So the height is going to be the same thing again as the primary draw. Remember what we're trying to do here is set the height to include the fact that the primary app bar at the top is going to be fixed. So we need to take that in consideration. Uh, so let's include that in here. So we've got min width and then the height. Now because of that remember we need to make sure we set the the margin at the top so I can just copy this from the primary drawer again there we go so that's now the height in place oh sorry the margin at the top so it is reduced down from the app bar. So let's just add some random text here by all means go ahead and copy and paste the array if you like if you prefer so we can add that in there, just to add some text for now. So just update that to include the typography. Now we are going to add a border on the right hand side. So let's do that. So this is going to be border right. So border right. So let's set the border then to uh, one pixel. So back ticks here because we're going to be utilizing the theme solid. And then we're going to use the, the theme color so it's consistent throughout. So, for example, when you do add, for example, a list, etc., and there are a dividers there by default, this is the default color for it. So it just makes it easier to work with ultimately throughout your site because all the borders are going to be the same color. Right. So that's the border right and then we can also set it because we want to set the display so that when this is viewed at the smaller screen it doesn't appear we want to remove it when it gets to the extra small right and when it gets to this small we want to then make sure that it can be viewable so we add block so that's a nice and easy way don't forget the comma between that there we go now then to actually add it Remember, this is just a template. We need to add it now to the home. So go over to home. We need to add that in. So we're going to import that in. So that's going to be the secondary draw. And then we can go ahead and hopefully add this right here. So when we look at the preview now, you can see, um, well, in actual fact, you can see there's potentially an error here. Uh, so first of all, the width isn't taking place, right? So the, the width that we set, 240, that isn't being applied. So that's the first thing. The second thing is when we scroll, notice that we start here. So that's the height, okay? So we've just measured the height from this point where one is to the bottom where you can see. So when I scroll down, notice that in actual fact, when I scroll past 14, well, you can see here that um, it stops, the border stops. Now, if I try to, well, in actual fact, it's not scrolling, is it, inside of it? So this is an example of uh, potentially the screen scrolling rather than this particular element. So we just need to make some changes. I'm not totally sure why I was milking that, but I was trying to build up to this point. And I could have just said it. Apologies. So this is the problem we've got. You can see that what this is describing or what this is telling me that there's some overflow. So we've set the height to a certain height and that's where this border ends. 
in the middle here you can kind of just about see where that ends uh, where it's next to number 14 and 15. so what we need to do is tell the browser that everything else needs to be um, hidden and therefore we can then go ahead and just scroll instead of scrolling the whole kind of page we can just scroll down and it would just show us all the numbers that are below without this issue that we have here with the border so very simple I'm sure I could have described that more effectively but uh, we're going to use overflow apologies right overflow we're going to set that to auto and then when we go back you can now see it has the element has its own scroll bar and we can scroll up and down the minimum width let's remember that we're trying to use pixels here so we need to define pixels let's not forget that let's go back and now you can see we've got the width and we've got the correct scrolling excellent apologies for keep repeating but there's more to come here this is just the template we've sorted that now where as and when like i keep saying we start to incorporate the data from our api we then actually pad this out or incorporate the components that fill up this space.